Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I'm going to give you five tips that changed my life as a photographer using Lightroom. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Germany. I'm a French photographer from the beautiful city of Paris, living in Los Angeles, California, and I make one to two tutorials per week. But this, this video is a little bit special. I was talking to Calvin, who is my partner in business, and we were thinking, what video can we do that I haven't covered? And he says, why don't you give the five tips that change your life as a photographer using Lightroom? And it just, and I really spent like hours trying, okay, if I have to tell somebody which is the five things that I find most amazing about Lightroom, what it is? Well, here it is. All right, so five tips that changed my life with Lightroom CC. Tip number one. Okay, let's say that I want to make uh, this beautiful view of El Capitan and I want to make the sky darker. So I'm going to take a linear gradient here. I'm going to lower, you know, I'm, I can go to exposure and lower the value. I'm going to make a gradient. Now the problem is that the top of the mountain is also dark. Well, way back when uh, Adobe added a brush, you can take a brush, you can put this brush into erase mode. And at first, I usually put it on auto mask, make sure flow is around 60 and I make it big. And now by making sure the minus stays, I can erase that value. So I use the auto mask for the border of El Capitan. And then I take auto mask off and I use it for inside. And this way now my linear gradient is affecting a little bit, but not completely El Capitan. Check this out before, after it's affecting mostly the sky. It doesn't have this dramatic change of color. And I can, you know, I can continue because I'm at 60%. I can put the flow at 100 and then paint inside, but just make sure you don't go over there. So that's the thing. And the brush also works with a gradual circle. So if I go here and I add a bit of exposure, a little bit of yellow, and I make like a, a circle, click on invert, make it like a little circle that like, you know, like the sun was there or there was some kind of light. You know, it's just like a more interesting light. It's a little too much, you know. Same idea, uh, let's say that I want to expand this value or retract this value. I can go to brush and I can go to erase. S same thing, so I can, I'm gonna erase what's uh, this value here. And then on the opposite, I'm gonna go to A and I'm gonna add the value there. So with a brush, you can add or retract, uh, you know, the linear gradient and the real circle. That's really the one thing I use all the time. So that was tip number one. Tip number two is using presets. Um, if you've been following my channel, you know that a while back I created a series called my signature preset. I use it all the time. There is not one photo that doesn't start by using my signature preset. What my signature preset is, is about 40 to 50 preset based on the time of the day. So for example, this is like a sunset photo. I can go here and I can click here on one preset called Sunset Linear Circle Light, and boom, most of the retouching is done. And, on I, can, I, and I can adjust. Uh, or, or, I, or I can take this photo of the sunrise in, in, in Paris, and I can go here. You know, I can go take Golden Hour, Golden Hour, a Linear uh, Lego Circle, for example. And boom, most of it is done. Now, a lot of this, when a preset says linear and circle, it means that it's got a linear gradient, which it, of course, which is there, which you can adapt as you want. And it means that there is circles. So if I click on circles, you have some different circles there, which is basically, you know, this one is for the sun. So you put it where the sun is. And I'm gonna give you a few of this uh, signature preset uh, for free. If you go under this video and you click, you can download them for free. So you can try them on your own photo. Again, a preset is only a starting point. Uh, you know, if you think it's too saturated, you can lower the saturation. If you think it's not enough, you can boost, you know, it's a starting point, but it's a great starting point because it's about 30 sliders uh, that, that it's done. It don't, you don't have to do, I know my sharpening is done. I know my lens correction is done. You know, I know my basic contrast is down. It just takes so, you know, it's so much faster. It, let me give you an example. A photo shot in Tuscany. I'm going to go to my day linear circle. Boom. And, uh, you know, one click. I can crop the photo a little bit, you know, and uh, and again, a preset is just a starting point. So I can go here, I can, you know, make it maybe maybe a bit more green. I can add a bit of contrast. I can take my uh, my gradients, my uh, radial circle, which is there. I can find my gradient and make sure they are in the right position. Uh, 
Voila. So that's pretty cool. One last. Let me show you one last. This one is, again, a sunset. So I'm going to go right to my sunset preset on this one. Sunset. Let's go for sunset light. Sunset dark. Sunset dark is better. Okay. And, uh, and voila. So really... You know, you can create your own presets. I create presets all the time. You can use my presets. You can buy them at a very low price. You can buy over 300 presets for like $27. The link is right below this video. Uh, if you want to use my or you can create your own. But presets are amazing. So that's my tip number two. Tip number three, the amazing world of Dodge and Burn. Oh my God. Dodge and Burn changed my life as a photographer. And that's something that's been around for like 100 years. So what it is, is you make some of the photo brighter or darker. So for example, when I use one of my presets, I already have like the linear gradient, which is here. You know, I can make it even darker if you want. Uh, so you can see, so that's kind of burning the photo. That's making this part, you know, um, you know darker, the, the top of the photo darker. I got another gradient here. But the way I really use Dodge and Burn is with two tools. One is the radial circle, which is already there. I already have one big circle there. But I want to make some other ones. I want to make, like, for example, uh, let me actually erase this one and make another smaller so you can see how I'm doing it. So I make a circle. I always invert the mask and feather it. And on this one, I want to add a bit more, you know, details to the cloud. So a bit of light, a bit of yellow, a bit of magenta maybe, and a bit of saturation. Usually when I have a circle that I like, I'm going to right click and duplicate it. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for, uh, you know, gradients of, of light, which is the same. Like this mountain here has the exact same value of colors. I want to make a little change in it. So I'm going to add a little circle there and you got to make it very subtle. Like don't do it like this, you know, do it like this. You got to do it in a way that like if you look back at this photo in five minutes and you wonder whether or not you put circles, you know you did it right. You see how this whole part of the photo has got like the same kind of value. I can right click and duplicate and put just one here and it just makes the photo a little more interesting. So I usually do like three or four great, three or four radial filter and then I take the brush tool and I do some more dodging there. Uh, dodging makes the photo brighter, sorry, dodging makes the photo brighter and, and burning makes the photo darker. So I'm going to make sure the feather is at 100%, flow and density around 70, 80. I'm just going to brush a bit of white, maybe add a bit of clarity in the same time. And I'm going to brush the river, for example. Okay, that's a little too much, so I'm going to back it down. And now i got like a leading line into the photo. Okay, so, you know, it's small things, but it's this small thing that's just going to make your photo pop completely. Let me show you, the, so that's b the before the brush stroke, you know, and, and let me go to the original circle. And let me show you that's before the original circle. See, it's very subtle, but it changes completely. It's Dodge and burning has been one of my biggest successful actions as a photographer where people go, oh, there is something special, a photo, but I cannot tell you what it is. So that was trick number three. Dodge and burning with the brush and the original circle. Okay, tip number four. Tip number four is I love to shoot in manual mode because this way I can use one of my presets to retouch a photo, synchronize that on all the photos, and I get an idea. Always as a starting month, but I get an idea. For example, this photo of the half dome, I was not in AV mode. I was in manual mode, so I shot the first one at 125th of second F9. You know, this one is 125th of second F9, and this one is 125th of second F9, you know. And let's say you're like a wedding photographer try to shoot in manual mode as much as possible. If you can take like 50 photos with the same f-stop, the same shutter speed, the same ISO, then you can use a preset or you can retouch or spend 20 minutes on the first photo. And for example, this one, I'm gonna lose the lone exposure preset. Uh, I'm gonna use this lone exposure preset, which I kinda like, maybe, you know, add a bit more magenta. Yeah, and, and, then I, and then because they were all shot in manual, I can select all the other two photos and I can click here on synchronize and I can synchronize that. And now I can press N, which is the survey mode. And then I can see my three photos, shift tab to go in full screen. And you know, in one click, I got three different views of the half dome. And you know, and, and, and it's, again, it's a study mode. Yes, I would make the middle one a bit, uh, you know, a bit um, lower, a bit darker uh, because I zoomed in here. But you know, I can appreciate my photo better because you know, they, they, are, they have like a basic retouching. 
So that's really cool. Shift tab to go back to the normal mode. So shooting in manual mode to be able to retouch one photo or use a preset on one photo and synchronize on all the photos that have the same settings to be able to choose better is my tip number four. Tip number five. Oh, oh, oh. This one's amazing. This one changed totally my life when this technology came out. And I do it all the time. Panorama in Lightroom. So here is five photos. I can right click, photo merge, panorama. I do it all the time. You know, you know what it is? When you shoot with a wide angle lens, sometimes you get so much distortion. You know, uh, anything which is very close to uh, your lens is going to be very big, and anything which is really far is going to be very small. By doing panoramas, you sort of get around that, you know? And they have this amazing new option called boundary wrap, where you can even take care of all the whites there and merge. So I do panoramas all the time. And what's amazing in Lightroom, and that's totally new, is, and this is the only software on the planet, as far as I know, that can do that, is that when you stitch your photo, uh, it's still a RAW file. So what, what used to happen before when I was doing panorama is I would retouch each of the photo, uh, you know, as, and then I would use like Autopano to stitch them all. And then sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, but the white balance doesn't work really well. Well, that's over because now I first I stitch, then I retouch. And it's always easier to retouch when you see the full view, not just one photo by one photo. You see, that's the panorama. It's called Untitled 46 Pano DNG. So it's a panorama. It's not retouched yet. So I can go and use one of my presets. I'm going to use Lone Exposure Linear or Circle Dark, for example. And boom, my panorama is retouched. Of course, you know, I would probably make it brighter, blah, blah, blah. And I would retouch it with my usual workflow. But again, I, I find you get a better result with doing panoramas uh, than just shooting wide angle photos. So that's my five tips. Uh, you know, I've been using Lightroom for many, many years, and really this is the five things that I love the most about Lightroom. I'm happy to announce that I have a new course coming out called the Lightroom Quick Start Course. You see, when I started photography, I always like to have a quick start course where in like in one hour or one half hour, I can completely master a software. You know, because sometimes you just struggle. I struggle so much learning Lightroom at first that I wish I had a course like this where, you know, in one hour, I can import photos, I can retouch them, and I can export them. Well, that's exactly what I try to do in this course. First, I'm going to show you how to import photos into Lightroom from an SD card. And then we're going to do this photo. This is the before, and this is the after. I'm going to show you all the local tools, all the main retouching function to get this result. Then we're going to do a crazy panorama. I'm going to take four photos from Beverly Hills, Los Angeles, California, with a great sunset, and we're going to stitch them, and we're going to get this panorama. Then we're going to go into the world of HDR and, and take the three exposure of the Venice Canal and get this result. This course is short. It's about 1 hour and 15 minutes. It's seven videos. I'm just going to show you also how to export the photos for Facebook, for social media, and also for printing. I can promise you in 1 hour and 15 minutes, you will be up and running using Lightroom like never. So check out my Lightroom Quick Start course.